Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the USA Volleyball Show. As you already know, we are the official podcast of USA Volleyball. I uh, hope you're all doing well. Once again, it is me flying solo today. Shout out to Steven. Hope you're listening while you are out on family, but we also hope you are having a great time and enjoying that dad life, too. Uh, you know, I've been busy myself. Uh, our whole department's busy. I think it's just a busy time for uh, USA Volleyball, uh, you know, front office staff in general. But we're just getting ready for another event season. You know, that's how it goes. Uh, with that, you got event season, also coaching on my end. What else is new? And then, you know, event planning. Like, we have a couple qualifiers coming over the weekend, like we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, and more importantly, I actually just got back from a site visit in Columbus. And I'll just tell you right now. Uh, those of you who are very familiar with the Opens Players Party, hopefully this is the best venue of the <laughs> since the return of the uh, since the full return of the of the tournament since the uh, pandemic. Uh, as far as everything else goes, that's all I'm going to say. And also just very excited for some uh, potential enhancements that we're looking at adding uh, to Opens this year as well. Registration is open. Um, we actually are at a little bit of a record in teams with o opens registration being, I guess, open again to the public for, uh, I guess, a little over a week or so now. We're at just over 130 teams and growing very fast. So let's see if we can break that record since opens has returned full force. But again, very, very, very excited for that tournament. But enough of that now. Before we get into this uh, this episode here, if you missed our last episode, be sure to go back and check it out. In episode number 83, we sat down with none other than Excelsior Region Commissioner and former club director of Woosh Volleyball Club uh, for two decades, Hazel Goldstein. Hazel chats about her time as a region commissioner and also running a club for two decades. She is a woman of many, many hats. Uh, she also talks about the name transition from the region, uh, which is very inf informational and insightful. Very glad she took the time to break that down for us and also uh, leads us into her retirement plans and so much more. Make sure you check out, uh, make sure you check check it out, excuse me, on all podcast platforms and also watch the video episode since we were live-ish from the ABCA convention in Tampa on YouTube and on the USA Volleyball website. Now, it is time for me to announce myself, announcing <laughs> news with Hughes. As a reminder, the 2024 Boys Junior National Championship registration, girls 18s, GJNC 11s through 13s, GJNC 14s through 17s, and once again, opens. That's right. All of our national championship registrations are now open. And on live and online live in AES, make sure you register now so you don't miss your chance to become the next national champion. Pro Volleyball Federation's inaugural season is underway. The first match had 11,624 fans show up in Omaha for the match between the Atlanta Vibe and the Omaha Supernovas packed house, and it did not disappoint, I believe. The match went a full went a full five sets. There are weekly matches streaming for free, so tune in and make sure you don't miss any of that action. It's so 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 cool to have more pro volleyball here in the United States. And going into 2025, we're just gonna have another league with League One volleyball as well too. So again, really great time to love pro volleyball and be a volleyball fan in the United States right here, as it is booming all across the board. Make sure you follow along the action on USA Volleyball social media and make sure you also follow on all along with all the latest news. You can visit usavolleyball.org. Now, time to talk about today's episode. We are finishing our conversations from the 2023 AVCA convention in Tampa with their chat with two-time Olympic medalist and former setter of the U.S. Women's National Team, Courtney Thompson. Courtney Thompson is such a vibe. She's so fun to talk to. Um, got a chance to see her in some of the uh, ABCA presentations that she was doing as she uh, took the time to talk with us uh, with her uh, with that busy schedule that she also had, too. And she's just 
just just naturally inspirational. She naturally just brings you into a conversation and reels you into. Um, but again, she shares what she's doing, uh, what she was doing at ABCA. She shared some of her favorite stories uh, on the Olympic side of those experiences and also gives a very, very, very uh, insightful advice to junior players that uh, that kind of that's kind of centered on going all in. OK, so remember that. Courtney also talks about her role with League One Volleyball and AKA LOVB and the excitement building around that too. And, uh, lastly, she touches on mindset training, which is very, very important and and to all athletes nowadays and so much more. Uh, again, she was so much fun to have, such a positive guest, very, very, um, uh, what's the word I'm trying to say here? Very contagious on that positive side of things there too. But uh Anytime, Courtney, Courtney, anytime you want to be a guest on the show again, we would love to have you. But enough of me talking, enough of this introduction. Let's get right into our conversation. Here is Courtney. Courtney, thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with us. I know you got a busy schedule here at the ABCA convention, but appreciate you taking a little time to chat with us. Yeah, thanks for having me. I am a big fan of all you guys put out and all of my friends. I see their clips, so I feel really honored that I get to be a part of this. So I'm stoked to be here. And we'll Mm -hmm. send you some clips too that you can promote uh, your episode on. (laughs) But Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we're here at the ABCA convention. Is this your first time? here at the at the convention part you know i came last year for a very small part but this is my first like full send yeah so i'm learning i'm a little green but it's it feels like a big family reunion you know like it's pretty cool even people that uh officiated games that i played in like a long time ago um (laughs) coaches obviously so it's cool just running into people left and right i'm sure Yeah. yeah What are impressions so far of, about the convention as a whole? And I know you've done one or two sessions already, but yeah, impressions. Yeah, it's cool. You know, I um, coaching's hard. So for me, I have so much respect for all all of these coaches at every level um, that are in it for the right reasons. And it's such a fun time for our sport. I just feel like the energy overall is like, oh my gosh, we're we're kind of where we've always wanted to be, and just we're just starting. So um, I'm, it's cool. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think it's a good time. We should open up to some like fast facts. Like, oh, yeah. What are some of your, uh, <laughs> what are some of those hobbies you love outside of volleyball? Ooh, well, I live in Utah now, so mm-hmm. I love the mountains. I'm a big skier, snowboarder. Ooh, okay. Yeah, I got, like I got more? up 45 days last year. What? Which is my best life. Days? So I'm, yeah, I'm making I'm up for zero. all those years I wasn't allowed years to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Come on out, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, mountain biking, uh, anything with music, a lot of concerts, a little okay. guitar here and there, reading. So they like to mix it up a little bit. Uh-huh. What kind of music genre? I feel like you're all over the place. I am. Yeah. Thank you. That's a hard one to articulate for me, but <laughs> anything I can dance to, Love I think that. anything, I just, I'm obsessed with the, um, what's the name of the documentary with John Batiste? Have you guys seen this? I haven't. No, oh I have not. Uh-oh. It's on Netflix. Okay. I forget the name. So not a great plug, but that <laughs> it's a, like, he's in a, he's a composer, uh, composer. Yeah, yeah. It's incredible. So oh, nice. all kinds of music. Is it like a like a full length or is it episode like no it's phase? full length yeah okay, sweet it's awesome. the og yeah to check that up yeah well uh nate go and i do an annual snowboarding trip after the open program uh in february so come join us um, thank you where are we going uh we usually do somewhere in colorado uh winter park i think is this year uh so i love that come I out think, to the open program yeah i think and nate then, and i have geeked out about this yeah, so yeah. i would love to make this That'd happen sweet all right That'd no pun sweet. intended i, like I gotta yeah. practice because i want to join you but i don't want to slow you down either no come <laughs> like on we're shredding around me we on welcome the all just, levels we'll get you a lesson then we'll yeah. meet you at opera after there we go yeah <laughs> no offense opera no, ski. Just, no. Yeah. <laughs> no we like uh we want to try to make it like a big kind of usc volleyball now love maybe too like just make it a big like trip like an offsite. You got to send like yeah, a yeah. staff At email. Or this is what I'm talking about. No, that's hey. what I keep telling Nate. Well, if you need any enthusiasm, I'm there. Awesome. Mm-hmm. We'll do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess. So we talked about interest hobbies off the court. Mm-hmm. Ooh, um, Apple Music or Spotify? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm on Spotify. Okay. I've been recently getting sent some Apple playlists. Okay. I'm like, is this a thing? Are we going back? Uh, I, I, thought, I hope I not. I thought Spotify was the jam, but. I think so, too. I hope, if they want to be our official sponsor of the podcast, we're open oh, to it. Oh, that's great. I mean, uh. What's your Spotify? What's your Spotify wrapped? Like, what's that? What's that top five? Oh, this would be uh-huh. embarrassing. <laughs> I love um, it. Now you gotta say it. It would probably be. Uh, this is really embarrassing. I'm not sure I can. <laughs> a lot of pop, uh-huh. probably okay. like. I'm gonna say Bieber's up there still. Like Ghost. Love that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, love that, that one. Ooh, okay. A little folk music. A little Brandy Carlile oh, vibes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you really are all, all over the place. Yeah, I all love over. It. I love it. Yeah. Uh-huh. Thank you. Uh-huh. Thank you. 
Well, uh, I think this is a perfect time to kind of, I guess we should <laughs> talk volleyball a little bit while oh, we yeah. have you here. Um, but yeah, kind of take us through, I guess, how you were introduced to the game of volleyball. Well, I grew up with two older brothers. So I think one, one reason we're all excited for all of the leagues happening right now in pro volleyball is because I didn't even, I hadn't seen a game of volleyball, um, but I played every other sport when I was, so when I was 12, I'd never seen a, a competition. And my friend had older sisters who wanted to play. So her dad started a club and was like, hey, will you come try out? And I was like, I mean, mom, can I try out for volleyball? Sure. And then I called her back. I was like, I don't know what to wear. Like, I'm not wearing spandex. Like at the time, that was like a big deal. Right. So I rolled up in basketball shorts and um, I didn't like volleyball that much at first. I found it challenging. Like, it's so technical. Mm -hmm. Um, I thought it was pretty hard. But uh, I think like in high school, we started getting good. And then I was like, okay. I I like this, but it took a while. Mm -hmm. Then you ended up in one of the most technical positions. Yeah. I would say too. Were you always like set on setting or did you want to play any other positions? Yeah, I didn't have a, I got put at setter right away. I think because I talked a lot um, (laughs) and I was short. (laughs) The time we didn't have a libero. So that's right. I I feel lucky. And I, you know, I, I was a competitor and I love to compete. And that's a big part of who I am as an athlete, but I didn't understand the position. I got really lucky playing for Jim McLaughlin at Washington, like, a true, I think the best teacher I ever played for. Yeah. And he was a setter and we just would spend hours geeking out on video and watching the best in the world and teaching me how to learn the position. And so I feel really lucky. Yeah. It was cool hearing you. I, uh, we popped into your session yesterday. You oh, and Jim yeah. were kind of talking a little bit about that and cool to hear, you know, your same perspectives, but also like very different too. Yeah. And just like that coaching <laughs> athlete relationship is really cool and, and cool to see that on display with yeah, you guys. Yeah, thanks. It's, I was I was laughing, I was telling Jordan because we had a session to prepare for that, you know, yesterday morning. It was the three of us in like upstairs, no one's around and we're just talking about setting with Jordan, who's the best setter in the world right now. Right. And then Jim, my like, you know, greatest mentor ever. And every time he talks, it like takes me right back to his office in college. That's cool. And it, it, it honestly feels like sitting at my parents' house, like the sense of home, uh-huh. you know, wow. like I'm like, oh man, we used to have hours of this. So yeah, he's, I, I always live, listen to him. Yeah, I feel like every coach should strive to create that yeah. atmosphere and that relationship. You would hope athletes. so. You would hope so. Yeah. You would hope so. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. awesome to hear that coming yeah. from you. Yeah. Yeah. Like along this whole journey, I mean, I know we, uh, we're probably going to dive in a little bit of uh, a college, but yeah. like, when did you just like, when was that hook factor for you where you're just like, you know, like I'm addicted to volleyball. I love this game and, you know, I can so, yeah. go somewhere with yeah. this. Yeah. It's a good question. I, somewhere in high school, I feel like I didn't get that many opportunities to play in college. Like mm-hmm. I didn't get a lot of scholarship offers. But hearing Jim talk about what was possible, and uh, if I'm being honest, I think I might have felt this excited about other sports. I didn't learn to like love the nuance of the game, but uh-huh. now I think, uh, but yeah, sorry, your original question in high school, it was just the next level. Like, oh my God, what an opportunity yep. to get to compete and play at this level and have all these experiences. And even then, I remember Jim, who is the biggest truth teller, he would tell, some other athletes like hey if you do this the right way you could play in the national team and he didn't tell me i couldn't but he didn't often say that i remember like i didn't know and then by the time i was a senior he was my biggest advocate and was like dude you can you can do this thing and he got me into the gym um somewhere along those lines i just fell in love with the the team aspect of volleyball like you can't really have one person take over and you get to cheer a lot, which I like. And it's, uh, I think at its best, it's such a fluid game. It feels like dancing. And if you've ever seen me set, I wasn't that type of athlete, like that it felt flowy all the time. But I got to tap into that it, as I played more and on the USA team and a few times at Washington. And it's just a really cool feeling. Well, you mentioned Washington and we're, you know, we're here at the ABCA convention, but the NCAA Final Four is also going on as well. Exciting volleyball atmosphere here in Tampa, Florida. Uh, but yeah, tell us a little bit about your time at Washington and yeah, yeah winning the title in 2005. Yeah, man, well. was, we had so much fun. Yeah. I feel so lucky. Like, it's a hard thing to get right to be in a location that you love, the school, the people. And I feel like I batted a thousand there and I, I just feel really grateful. But we, Jim was there like three years before. So a lot of the transition of culture and all these things were in place. Yeah. So I came in at a perfect time and we made it to the Elite Eight my freshman year. Tough loss in five. Not that I remember. And then <laughs> we got our asses handed to us at the Final Four my sophomore year. But it was a cool experience to be in the hype and like yeah. know what that Elite Eight game is hard to win. 
and to be a part of that and it was really cool and then the pain of that just drove us through the next year and so it was it was really cool because we wanted to win the title but truly like learning was the compass for us and it was there was so much excitement around like how good do you think we could be can you imagine like win or lose like every monday there was this energy of like ooh, what could we do better this yeah. this week and jim led that but it truly our team like bought in and obviously winning a title is so special and fun and like surreal all of the things you dream about but i remember a cool feeling after like after you kind of stopped cheering for a minute and the come down and we were like dude i want to play again like i want i want to keep going who's next yeah. like yeah. i want to be challenged and I don't know in life to like really find a group that embraces challenge and loves it because you're sticking together and you're in this process of learning and becoming like i don't know if there's anything better so yeah, i loved yeah. it at washington it was hard mm -hmm. and beautiful and everything in between yeah. mm -hmm. what are what are um can you talk about maybe one of your best memories that you have from there aside from you know winning the title of course yeah like, outside of volleyball uh it could be either or, or. Okay. outside yeah. of volleyball within volleyball it could be, be both oh, man there's a like there's a lot yeah <laughs> i would say i'll just stick with the the volleyball theme but we we had never been to a final four mm -hmm. and we got it going we had some great crowds especially back in the day at washington and it was pretty special for seattle and the elite eight game we won we were down and we came back it's pretty epic win and our fans didn't leave so like there's at Washington, there's like the lower bowl, the upper bowl, and they all converge to the middle. And we ran around like the middle of the oh, arena, so just cool. high five and hugging. Yeah. We, you know, we didn't know these people. And um, it just felt really special for our uh -huh. city at the time. And to me, that's what it's all about. And uh, yeah, so I, that was one of my favorite memories. Can you, you know, for, for those who haven't been to the final four as a fan, yeah. you know, or even a player, <coughs> but can you just like explain that atmosphere? Like, could you put it into words at all? Like, what's it like, you know, differences from, you know, even on Elite Eight, but like, yeah. you know, normal matches played? There's a, it's hard to articulate. Like there's an energy when you walk on the floor in any of the NCAA games, it just ramps up as you go. Yeah. Like the first one, you know, the signage and the light, like it feels a little different. Uh, certainly the second week, the Sweet 16, Elite Eight, it's like, ooh, all right, we're there. But the final four is, it's just like the pinnacle of our sport in yeah. this country mm -hmm. so far. And there's a, yeah, it's electric, there's energy. And if you think about how many young athletes play volleyball, like this, this thought always crosses my mind. There's like, let me do some quick math, 48 women, roughly 12, you know, 12 per right. team yeah. that still get to play, compete yeah. this cool. weekend yeah. of the entire country. You think of like all the girls that dream about just playing in college much less getting to this. It's such a cool opportunity. Like, and then, so I'm just gonna keep going here. Keep, keep going. <laughs> I also think like, if you're competing, how many days of your year do you get to feel this like, you don't know how it's gonna go, but there's this energy of like something's going down, yeah. you know? And, and your family's involved and your friends are all excited. And I don't know, it's, it's really special. We don't, as humans, get that many days that feel that like switched on, um, hopefully, but it, it, this kind of arena so i just think it's special and uh you got to be present and enjoy it yeah do you have i mean this is this episode will go out after the match but i just talking now do you have a oh, prediction no. oh no <laughs> i don't know man i i filled out a bracket okay so mm -hmm. i will say i chose wisconsin <laughs> in my bracket okay. however i watched all of those games last weekend and i was like dude this is anyone's game and the is, fight yeah. that these teams have like they represent all that is good in volleyball and it was so fun to watch so i'm a huge fan of all the teams i respect all these coaches mm -hmm. um know a lot of them pretty well and um, i'm just excited to see them compete yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah do you guys uh so i'm originally from dallas so Let's I, go. Uh, I tend to go Texas and I, I don't think we asked where you were from. No, I'm just <laughs> I, don't think we, I don't think we care about that. No, we get it. Texas. I'm picking Texas. Yeah. Hook them horns. Uh, I, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I pick Wisconsin as well, too. Right. But I mean, kind of what you said, just seeing those games last week. I mean, like Pittsburgh reverse sweep, for Dude. example, there. Insane. Yeah. I yeah. say a cuss word if we were allowed to do that. <laughs> but I mean, just like insane. It's anybody's game. But yeah. Yeah, we just glad we get to be here and just watch it, watch it and take it all in. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, that's probably the best part about being here is just the like mindedness of, you know, all the coaches here at the convention and then all the fans that are walking around the streets of yeah. Tampa. You yeah. see so mm -hmm. many Nebraska fans mm -hmm. like 
They wear their gear. Yeah. They wear their gear. Like on I, our flight over here, it's just like people <laughs> oh, just yeah. Nebraska it up. Like they like, only what? brought Nebraska gear on this trip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We played them in the finals yeah. in mm-hmm. 2005, a few years ago. Mm-hmm. And the it was in San Antonio, and it was a sea of red. Sea of red. I mean, oh, you would have thought we were in. Yeah. But it's cool. Yeah. It's there. You know, that's the one of the coolest places to play mm-hmm. in our country. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess kind of to keep things moving, kind of going throughout your career, let's uh, kind of transition over to the U.S. Women's National Team and your time there. Um, I guess how, what what were those early years with the national team? How did you find yourself on, the, oh, on that team and the program? Just a lot of begging. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I still, I feel so grateful. I've, I've ma- I played nine years, 10 yeah. years on the USA team. And I, Jim got me a tryout and was like, you know, hey, just have her in the gym. I got cut from the 2018. I, w- I left college early, did the thing in Colorado Springs, got cut as I should have. And then when Hugh McCutcheon took over, Jim called him and was like, you know, just give her a chance. So I had like two weeks. He said, all right, you can come for two weeks and we'll talk after. And then two weeks became a month. And then a month is like, all right, we'll talk again. So it, it really feels like every day is a tryout, which it kind of is there. Uh, and then I got, I was getting my ass handed to me every day. Yeah. And I was on, you know, the bottom court. There's a lot of girls in there early. And, but I, I loved competing and, uh, I feel like I just like, wouldn't go away. <laughs> and I will say I was overly concerned with, man, I'm not making rosters. I'm not traveling. I'm, do I have a chance at the Olympics? Like I was really focused on kind of the outcome and I went and, um, had a conversation with you and I was like, Hey man, I know I bring good energy, but I don't want to be a mascot. So if I don't have a chance, you got to cut me. And I, I very much thought that was the last day of my career. And uh, he was like, hey, it's not likely, but you you have a small, you have a, you have a chance. It's not a high chance to go to London. And uh, from that day on, I kind of was like, you know what? I'm going to try to influence this team, whether I go or not. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to freaking go hard. So at the end of this thing, one, I can have peace when I'm done with my career. And I'm going to try to be the best teammate. So that if I'm watching, at least I feel like I did something. Right, yeah. And uh, funny how that works. Like the less I thought about me and my performance, I started playing a lot better and the stars kind of aligned for me. So I barely made the London team, um, but learned a ton about myself and it was just a wild ride since then. So yeah, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, speaking about, you know, London, you know, you're a two time Olympian. Um, Can you talk about some of those (laughs) experiences, you know, one of bronze and a silver medal there, Um, maybe from your favorite experiences, favorite matches there, um, anything in between there? Oh man, so many memories. Mm-hmm. I It's still very surreal that I got to compete in two Olympics. My parents every once in a while, they're like, is this real life? <laughs> Did this actually happen? But I think your your first opening ceremonies, is, actually bo- any opening ceremonies is like pretty epic. Yeah. And you just get the sense of like, it's so much bigger than you. And even like the stars, the basketball team and the swimmers and all these guys, everyone feels so stoked to be there. It's like really humbling. I'm getting chills thinking about it. So <laughs> that was really cool. You know, there's some moments, uh, I, I think more playing in Rio. I have like those kind of moments that really stand out to me where you're just, you know, on the stage that you've dreamed about or couldn't even think to dream about, you know, and, and getting to do it with your best friends. And yeah. it's really special. But I did ask on accident, can I tell a story? Yeah, but This is actually <laughs> so, so a funny a memory. We're walking into the opening ceremonies. This is in London. Uh-huh. And we had white jeans on, which are hard to pull off. But our, <laughs> and our team is all tall and beautiful, and whatever. So they're in front of me. I'm only 5'7". So I'm hanging back, and there's a woman next to me who's talking to the girl next to her. And she was like, man, these white jeans are making me feel fat, like blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I am just on a high. We're at the Olympics. I was like, girl, you look amazing. Blah, blah. I'm like ta- hyping her up. And then as she's turning, I go, what sport do you play? And right as I said play, I, re- I saw her. And it was Serena Williams. Oh, my gosh. That's incredible. I was like, and she just looked at me. And I was like, oh, my God. I was like, got it. Did I right. just ask her yeah. what sport she plays? That was like a funny, like, oh, like, oh, you're such an idiot. You blew it. Like, you got one chance. I don't even make a joke about it. I don't know. I don't know how. But Dude, yeah. I know. I was like, I didn't. Even, I was just like, but, but it was started, awkward started, for both of us. She just looked at me and then like turned around and kept talking. I was like, yeah, that's the best <laughs> option here. So <laughs> that's awesome. But Sorry, yep, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think um, also one of my favorite memories, I think, you know, we were so bummed in London how we lost. And then you're on this path the next four years to like become your best. And we mm-hmm. won world champs. And it was like we had this great culture. 
And we lost 15-13 in the semis in Rio, and that was so gutting. But I think it was really cool and a testament to what Karch created with the culture. And obviously, we saw them win a gold medal after. But yeah. for us, after that match, we had like a few hours to like cry or whatever. And then it, we came back and it was like, what are we going to be about? What are we going to stand for? These are the options. And we it was the coolest uh, meeting with our team and just how we stayed connected after that and how we fought for each other that next game. To me, that's like what it's all about. No one can give you that. No one can take it away. And we're crying we're bummed we're playing cards that night like what else like you're just it's just the human experience in this sport form and those moments are so special and, and ones i'll remember forever yeah mm -hmm. and we've heard from some past guests too that that bronze medal match is one of the hardest to play yeah especially at the olympics you're turning around the next day yeah. to, to play that game and fight for a medal but yeah i guess what were those conversations like with the team as you guys were preparing for that medal match and then were you drawing from some of your experiences in college like we just talked about losing in the final four and, and yeah, stuff like that? Yeah, you know, it was cool because Karch had, we had talked so much about being resilient and put words to it. So I think culture is an extension of relationships which are built on language and our language around hard things was like, let's go, yeah. like bring it, you know? Obviously you need to, to, to play that level. But we, you know, after we came back, it was like, what do we want to stand for? What are we fighting for? And we all talked about that. So before the match, it was like, oh, we're, you know, of course you want to go home with some hardware. But what's interesting about that match, it's so gritty because you're just like the emotions that come after losing in the semifinals in the Olympics, you know, you've worked 20 years for that moment. And then, you know, in such a way, it was like 15, 13. It's so gutting. So it's this really cool, like visceral just like dude we're we're in the dog fight yep. and we just yeah. got to keep punching and it wasn't a pretty match but no. it was so fun and yeah. uh it was a pretty cool feeling after ending on a win i will say silver's tough the bronze medal match is tough but to win that was right. incredible yeah because mm -hmm. you have to win that medal yeah yeah, yeah. and That's then awesome. someone put on twitter like bronze is the new gold and i was like no it ain't <laughs> it's very much <laughs> third place gold, yeah i was like bronze. not the same so but in watching watching this team in the last olympics was like pure joy and we you know we're all texting we're facetiming with krista so cool. and yeah. all these guys and to see them like put it all together and mm -hmm. uh represent you know all the things that you fought for and um that we all did it was pretty special i'm so pumped for them yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah i mean you seem like such a you know positive spark plug like mm -hmm. you know i know you know for, like you know your positivity on the team um like what what advice you do you have for you know junior players or yeah. collegiate players that um struggle with bringing that positivity factor consistently yeah. to you know their teams even themselves yeah it's a good question i think uh well thank you i was gonna say you see me in practice i get in there a little bit but <laughs> no uh i think with you know positivity we're really talking about the skill of optimism and resilience and what i will say in my experience that i've learned it's really hard to commit to something and to and to be about it and it's vulnerable you know most people play it safe and it's the most beautiful thing you can do as a human is to like go all in in my opinion and so if you want to be resilient part of that is one committing and two letting it hurt like i was dramatic as a young athlete not saying we want to get stuck in that but when you do go for something it sucks and part of like getting over losses is feeling the disappointment enough to where it's like, oh, I want to change something. And so I think a lot of my fire came from, I wasn't afraid to like feel the hard stuff. And then when you're there, like what else do we have than the next best thing? You know, like you get your ass kicked. It's like, yeah, I can sit in this or like, what are we going to do? So to me, it's like, what can we control? And let's, let's go at it. I think life is way more fun when you're full sending, you know, and, and you're in the arena, you're getting whooped, but it's, that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Did I answer if, your question at all? If you put on a shirt, I would buy that. <laughs> yes. Life is, well, uh, yeah. Wait, which part? That. Life is better when you're full sent. Yeah. yeah. I would love that. I would, can shirt, we get yeah. some shirts? That's a great. That's a great quote. I would. Yeah. I want that uh -huh. shirt. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, Five percent commission. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. split it. Wait. Fifty fifty. Fifty fifty. Hi Brooke. <laughs> um, lo this is the best part about the. I know. Um, I feel like I'm the like, convention. Hey, Everyone's walking so by and. Get to see everybody. Yes, but. we we actually interviewed Brooke last. Year oh, you did. In, uh -huh. in Tampa. Nice. Not in last year in Tampa, Omaha. Yeah. Omaha. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Weather much better in Tampa than than Omaha it is was nice. last year. <laughs> I got off the plane. I was like, oh, yeah. Hello. It's <laughs> perfect. Wrong, you know? yeah. yeah. 
Um, well, I know you have a hard stop in a little bit, but wanted to get to talking about League One as yeah. well before you take off. But yeah, I guess you're now part of Love. Yeah. Um, I guess talk about your role and then, yeah, just the excitement around uh, League One volleyball. Yeah, it's such a cool time for our sport. And we're really supportive and excited for all of the leagues happening. Like for, uh, for our athletes to have pro opportunities here, how cool is that? Yeah, you know, amazing. stuff we've always dreamed of. So I feel really honored to get to be a part of it. Uh, League One Volleyball, Pronounce Love. Uh, I think what makes us unique is the duality of we really want to be the best league in the world and bring this international product here, like not a college plus, but really the highest level. And we're going to work towards that. We have a long way to go. But the other part is we want to do it in a really meaningful way that's like connected to communities. And so my role is the head of pro integration. So we're, we've created like a full ecosystem. We've partnered with 49 clubs. It'll be growing here awesome. in the next bit. But for the last three years, we've been creating this community of like 250,000 people now. And by the time we launch next year, we hope to double that. So we're not, um, pro is not funded by the club. That's like a, a misnomer. We've been getting asked about that. It's purely part of the community aspect. And so we want this to be sustainable and meaningful. It's the best part of volleyball, you know? Yeah. So we're starting in um, six markets and a bunch of our founding athletes are Olympians. And again, we want the best athletes in the world. So we've intentionally started our league after Paris. Um, so we start November next year and we're really excited. I, like you guys, like I think Karch embodies this maybe better than anyone, but I really admire people that want to be the best in the world and like do it in a way that's um, meaningful, you know? And I think you can get really good. You can be an Olympian, you can win medals and be a punk, Yeah. you know, and erode relationships along the way. And there's a diff I don't think experience and performance are exclusive. So um, it's cool to work for a company that also embodies that in everything we do. Like we want to make this as dope as we can for these athletes. And obviously I feel strongly about that because yeah. I played nine seasons overseas. Woo! <laughs> Just fun. But it's, man, it's a grind. You guys yeah. know, like. Eight, nine months out oh, of the year, right? God. Yeah. Yeah. And so cool. But like, you really do miss like weddings, funerals, yeah. and holidays. And Many life events. Yeah. yeah so mm -hmm. it's pretty cool. I I haven't felt this sense of purpose since I played. Like, I wake up in the morning. I'm like, in the best of ways, a little anxious. Like, we got to get this right. You know, we got to we gotta create this for the right reasons and our athletes are incredible. A lot of obviously the US US guys and yeah. other ones we've we've announced and will be announcing, but I feel so grateful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you talk about, I mean, the current following, 250,000 is a lot yeah. for, you know, something that's just kind of, I mean, I know yeah. it's been, you know, years in the making, but this is a lot. You plan on doubling that, you know, going into the start of the uh, inaugural season. What's some of the feedback that you, that you have been like you know seeing and been receiving from you know your fan base from yeah. you know, from these people? I feel like something switched the last few weeks. I think because we announced one our six city in mm -hmm. Austin, a few coaches that are, you know we got a lot of good feedback of like oh you know Tama Miyashiro is one of my best friends, also a medalist and a coach. You know, yeah. incredible. Um, so the coaches we're bringing and then where athletes are going, like it feels more tangible. Mm -hmm. So the feedback has been really fun, like in the last month here. And part of my role is, is head of integration. And also I work with a lot of the club coaches and adding, trying to add value and help where we can there is it's so meaningful for our club athletes to have pros to look up to, you know, and not just like the best in the world, but these are like incredible young women that embody, I don't have kids yet, but everything I would want my kids to look up to, which is really cool. And it's also cool for the pros. Yeah. Yeah. Cause like, it's fun to explore your best and to try to be the 1% in the world. And at the end of it, if there's not like connection that comes through it, it can be kind of empty. You know, I wrestled with that, this after my first Olympics. I was like, what am I doing in the middle of Poland, siding out on a Tuesday, you know, like, what am I doing with my life? So, so, for our pros to, to be connected to communities, they'll be practicing next to these club athletes. And I just think it's really special. So we've been, we've been getting a lot of cool feedback from that as well. I think the other part about League One Volleyball that's, that's really unique is like, we really want to train the whole athlete. So not just in volleyball, but we have a whole, the other part of my job is like all the off-court offerings. And so our pros are getting access to financial, uh, you know, people that are experts in, in that realm and, performance psychology and you know brand awareness and storytelling like all these cool things that 
um, they're getting access to the best and then so are our club athletes. And then one of the cool things we're doing this year because they're still overseas is that we're all learning about the same thing every month. And then our pros are making videos for our club athletes oh, on this cool. topic. So we're kind of like weaving in all of it. But again, we we want our athletes to be whoever they want to be and the next LeBron and Steph Curry. So it's about like the marketing and and endorsement deals and and people want we want them in front of these athletes you know what i mean yeah, yeah. so we're excited for that too yeah it's mm -hmm. awesome i think uh i know we're coming up on a little yeah under five no minutes. i want to keep going man sorry too, but i mean i think it'd be a good last question to ask about you know mindset training that's something yeah. you're very strong in very passionate yeah. about um you know how do you go about it yeah you know i feel lucky because we've worked with dr michael gervais the last four years on the usa team mm -hmm. and he came in and was like you know, we just lost in the finals. He's like, how many of you guys have formally trained your mind? And we're looking around like someone was like, what does that mean? <laughs> and obviously the narrative has shifted since, but he, that experience fundamentally changed how I dealt with unknowns and challenge and competing on the world stage. And so for me, I feel strongly because most of us grew up getting told like, hey, go be confident. And which works when you're confident and when you're not you're like, what the hell do I do now? Yeah. So we talk about it and train it as you can train your mind in the same way you train your body in the weight room, same way you train your craft. And uh, what I like about what we get to do is like we can make it really tangible. So we, it's like going to the gym for your mind every single day. And there's so much agency when you realize you're not your thoughts. And there's so much agency when you can realize, oh, I, I get to dictate this relationship. And obviously there's some days that are harder, yeah. um, but it's really all about training our mind to be on time and present. And that's kind of where mental performance and mental health meet is when I'm not stuck in the future, I'm not stuck in the past, but I'm just here. And that's also when volleyball and podcasts get so fun. Yeah. That's, like, that's what it's all about. So we do, we do talk about that a lot at League One Volleyball and in everything I do outside of that, I'm obviously I'm geeking out. <laughs> Could talk about that for days. So thanks for asking. Uh -huh. The ultimate volley nerd right I here. Know, yeah. I know. <laughs> Courtney, thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with us. I know you got a busy schedule here, but we're going to let you get back to it. Mm -hmm. uh, but appreciate all your stories and all your insight and talking about love uh, as well. And really excited for that league to take off and what it's going to become. And thank and you. USA Volleyball and Love announced their partnership I early know, this week. My whole world. Yeah. I was like, yes. I was <laughs> like, both your this worlds is together. Yeah. so cool. And it, they're both so meaningful to me. Like, I'm excited and thank you for having me yeah. and for everything you guys do for this sport in our country. And we hope to uh, to keep it going the right direction. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Uh, where can people follow you on social media? You follow your journey? Yeah. Right? Um, social media. Great question. I'm on Instagram. Yep. Ctom underscore three. Let's go. There we go. <laughs> uh, but lovb.com. Yes. We've got all kinds of stuff. We'll be announcing some new some other coaches and our new athletes uh, probably starting in January. So a uh -huh. lot of fun stuff. and. Grateful to be here. Thank you guys. Cool. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, yeah. I'm sure we'll talk soon. All down right, the road. Cool. Thank you. I mean, like we mentioned before, such a great interview, just an amazing person to have um, take the time to be a guest on our podcast. Um, like I mentioned in the introduction, um, Courtney, anytime you want to be a guest on the show or just literally hang out and talk about any kind of facets of life, uh, totally happy to do that too. Um, you're just such a such a great person and we I, I i love the fact that you don't change no matter what audience you're in front of you can be in front of hundreds of abca audience you can be on the you know national team literally competing at the olympics and you are you know that same infectious person and that's something we very 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 much appreciate and also really want to talk talk and touch on um how much i appreciate you took you um you breaking down uh, the importance of mental training and the mental strength remind uh, the the mental reminder of what it takes to uh, bring that aspect to the physical game of volleyball, not only volleyball, but life as well. Uh, you know, the coach and me took a ton of notes and um, I'm applying a lot to the high school program I coach, the, the boys club program I coach and the girls too. But I mean, uh, it's all very, 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 very good information. And um, yeah, it's just League One Volleyball is in great hands when it comes to your specific role, especially Salt Lake. If we're talking, you know, League One Volleyball, Salt Lake specifically as well, too. Um, that team, that whole 
aspect of what you're going to bring to the table is in very, very good hands. And I cannot wait to see what you unravel with them too. So again, thank you, Courtney, so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule at ABCA because it was a busy one um, to join us on the show and be a guest on the pod. Um, we very, very, very much appreciate it. Now, on to our upcoming events because we have quite a few. Um, up first, which is uh, a city and qualifier that I will personally be at uh, over this weekend. We had the Salt Lake City Showdown Girls 18 National Qualifier February 9th through the 11th. And you guessed it, Salt Lake City. We will see you there. Up next, we also have the Dennis Lafada Gateway Boys National Qualifier February 10th through the 12th in St. Louis. Shout out to the Edge 16 National Cannot make it there with you guys because I will be in Salt Lake City, but you guys know what to do. Let's try to bring home a bit. All right, that's our goal. You guys can do it. Best of luck to you there. Um, we also have coming up the USA Volleyball Beach Tour. Uh-oh. Florida National Qualifier, February 10th through the 11th in Tavares, Florida. Great to see some beach events back on the calendar here as we're kind of getting into more of the, you know, sunny side of the, I guess, winter season that we're in as well too um up next after that we had the avc dallas girls 18s national qualifier from february 16th through the 18th in Mannheim. if you are playing at the boston festival on weekends of february 23rd through the 25th or on march 1st through the 3rd be sure to check out our u.s sitting teams in their exhibition series the bank play canada on the first weekend and then the women will face Germany on the second weekend. So a lot of sitting action. If you're going to be in Boston over those two weekends, be sure to check out all the action there. Uh, more details and all upcoming events can be found, you guessed it, at usavolleyball.org. Now, moving on to the pro side of things. Make sure you tune in weekly to usavolleyball.org for men's and women's national team updates from all the pro leagues that they are in. And remember, listeners, you can rate, review, share this podcast with your friends, families, and teammates. It really helps us grow, reach new listeners, helps our following, all that good stuff. And you can also check out our video episodes um, on our website and on YouTube once again. Every episode, and we're doing it again right now. We thank you for your continued support of this podcast. Um, it's so appreciated. We cannot tell you how much we appreciate you guys tuning in, listening to us, giving us feedback, the whole the whole yard thing. Okay, appreciate you guys. If you know of a club that should be featured on this podcast, a story you like us to share, or a topic you want us to hear about, uh, make sure you email us. Okay, the USA Volleyball Show at usav.org. You can leave us feedback. Let us know how we're doing. Once again, bring up any topics or subjects you want to hear about. Um, let us know. We will be listening and we'll make sure to add it to our long list of agenda items. But new episodes drop every other week with the occasional surprise episode. Hint, hint, might have one, might ha not have one coming soon or in the near future. Be on the lookout for that. But until then, thank you all for listening to a another episode of the USA Volleyball Show. We're the official podcast of USA Volleyball. This has been the USA Volleyball Show with Clarence Hughes and Stephen Munson. It's produced by Curtis Ward. Our content producer is Lara Fawcett. Our marketing lead is Bree Jaycox. If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to rate and review. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the USA Volleyball Show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts.